Okay, uh, we're here today to uh, for a hearing on an injunction to stop U.S. Bank from trying to take uh, Full Circle Farm, which is a family farm that's been in the area for over 40 years and is a high spot for the counterculture community and for the progressive community. Uh, it's been here helping people out for a long time. For the past two years, we've been in a battle with U.S. Bank who has used fraudulent documents and uh, the lack of the court scrutiny to try and foreclose and take the property on a note which the owner here, Mr. David Chow, never signed, uh, never gave his authority for, and when uh, it was actually done by his ex-spouse, um, who didn't have the authority to use the property. And the people who originally did the loan were a, a company called Option One who had been kicked out of California uh, for doing just this kind of thing. And what they did is when uh, Mr. Tao tried to talk to them, tried to return money, tried to do all kinds of things, uh, they told him that he wasn't the borrower and that they wouldn't talk to him. And they proceeded to do things like uh, hold payments in suspension, uh, put them in different places, tell them that he was owing money when he didn't, so that by the time that they did their illegal foreclosure proceedings, he was actually, according even to their own records, he was over a month and a half paid in advance at that point. So they really didn't have anything, really reason to go at that point. Um, his first attorney, was really, did absolutely nothing. Uh, talked to the bank, the bank basically told him that they wouldn't talk to him. Uh, never filed any paperwork, never did anything uh, until Mr. Chow's meager money ran out. And then he dropped him. So he hadn't done anything in the first place and then he dropped him at the end. Mr. Chow went to do a bankruptcy and the attorney that he had hired to help him for some reason, we don't know why, failed to let him know that there was a hearing that he had to appear at. And because he didn't appear at that hearing, and because she didn't appear at that hearing, the bank got a default judgment against him. So in all this time, the bank has never had their question, had their paperwork question, the bank has never done has never negotiated. All they've ever done is try to take the property. And they try to take the property because it's a valuable piece of property out by the airport that we know that the airport and other people would really like to get their hands on. So this has been a battle that's been going on for them for years. And it's kind of concluded now at this point with this. Uh, the documents that the bank has filed are so discrepant, have such discrepancies in them and uh, to the point that the recorder's office stamped on their documents that this is only recorded as an accommodation and doesn't reflect title. So, in other words, the only title that they really recognize right now is Mr. Chow's title, his original title. The bank, so the bank is trying to foreclose, trying to do all this stuff. When we tried to get them in court, they filed an unlawful detainer action against them. This time they filed two unlawful detainer actions on the same case. They tried to run one, we were the one, the last one they served us with, the first one they never served us. Um, we responded to that service, we responded to that complaint, and then they went down and got a judgment on the one that they never served us with. This they went, then they went to the sheriff with that trying to get an eviction, but fortunately we have to say that the sheriff, since we've been talking to him, they've been paying a little more attention to these matters, and they found that something was wrong with the writ. They wouldn't tell us exactly what, or anything like that. All they could say is that there's something wrong with the writ. And so they wouldn't serve it, and they sent it back. So now they're, they'd be forced to go back in the court in order to get that new writ. And so today we're here to get an injunction against them to stop them from the harassment that they've been doing. Uh, they've caused uh, members of the Sheriff's Department to come out and harass uh, him and his family uh, to the point to where his, uh, his girlfriend had uh, lost, her, lost her first baby.
due to this and the doctors told us it was because of the stress and everything was being caused by this. So uh, they've, they've tried all kinds of things. They've had sent people out there. Uh, we know, we don't know, these people look like criminals themselves that, you know, when they were cleaning up trying to take things, they took things from the property. They did a lot of stuff. They've, they've been harassing them, trying to make everything as miserable as possible. So our organization, Justice Reform Coalition, has been with them, but we, we are part of Occupy Sacramento, and Occupy Sacramento is now a part of this operation too, and we de intend to defend this property to the max and to get justice out of this, because this is the problem, what this, what this bank has done to this man, they've done to millions of people around this country which is the reason why we're having the economic crisis that we are. You know, everything is falling that. The counties are losing money because the banks are taking property, they're devaluing the property, then they, they're only paying the taxes on that, so counties are using, losing billions of dollars in tax dollars because of stuff like this. And because they're able to present papers in court that they don't have to verify. They, and when we ask, well, we've asked them for the, you show us the original documentation which says that you have title to this. And they've never been able to do it. And they won't be able to do it because it doesn't exist. Well, where do you go from, from here if the hearing doesn't go in his favor? Well, we'll file, we'll file an appeal. We'll, we'll have to file an appeal. Um, we'll go get some more legal advice on the matter and we'll do whatever we have to do in order to keep this from happening. I mean, right now, we're at the point where they don't really have a, a title. Their title's not really recognized by the recorder's office. The only title that's really recognized by the recorder's office is this man's. So what we may have to do is, re is redo, reconvey the, t you know, make a motion to reconvey the title and to let them know that they don't have any title. Their paperwork says they don't have any title. All it says is that this was an accommodation for you because you wanted us to record it. That's basically what it says. It doesn't say that they, and it says on it that it doesn't reflect title. And that's what we're saying, that they have no right, they have no title, they have nothing in paper which says that they have any right or any standing to foreclose on this property or to, to say in any way that they have any ownership of this property. Why do you think they are uh, at this property? Well, because it's almost three acres sitting out in Garden Highway behind the uh, golf, next to the golf course and behind the airport. It's an easement way that the airport has been wanting to get because they have plans for that back part of their, of their property. It's also a place that the, that the golf course has had their eye on. Now, I do believe that the golf course may have dropped theirs because they seem to be pretty much focusing on the property they have, and they haven't messed with us since then. But we don't know about the airport. But we know that it's a valuable piece of property that they, can, that they basically will pick up they don't own for nothing and be able to try and turn it around and sell it to the, to the airport or to some other agency out there that would be interested. This court battle uh, against U.S. Bank. Um, it's the second battle. The first one was against the U.S. government for marijuana for two and a half ounces, and they seized the property 20 years ago. Two and a half ounces. For two and a half ounces, they put both my parents in prison for two and a half years for two and a half ounces, and. and it, that case was over with 20 years ago, and uh, ironically.
ironically enough, now it's um, fighting U.S. Bank instead of the U.S. government. And um, they've done like so many crooked things through, through this whole thing that they, they want the property so bad that they're willing to do things that are totally out of the normal for any other foreclosures or any other piece of property. Why do you think they want your property? Mm, I think it's the, the airport that really wants the property as, as far as that goes. So, uh, so the airports, you know, has ways of working with people and Sacramento is a you know pretty small town so they, they uh, somehow it just comes around where they just want the property they, they always have um, and uh, now they're just going out of their way to do U.S. banks just going out of their way to do a lot of crooked stuff. Um, which is, well, we're, we're hoping to uh, get an injunction to uh, get the uh, civil lawsuit uh, consolidated with the, uh, uh, the unlawful detainer, and uh, we haven't had any success in that, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get some justice today in uh, Department 54 here, and uh, uh, they'll uh, um, see what, uh, how U.S. Bank is doing these things that are wrong. Go in our favor. Are, are, do you think you're likely to have success today, or what do you think? Uh, with so have? many failures lately, there's bound to be some success at some point in time. Uh, we stay persistent, keep trying to do this, but uh, eventually things will come our way. If the court does the right thing, I don't think we'll get the injunction. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to it? No, um, just hopefully we'll, we'll get some justice. And as we get justice in this case, hopefully it'll help uh, a lot of other people in their fight and their foreclosures, and it'll open up the eyes uh, to all these other cases that are going on. So hopefully it'll happen. Thank <laughs> you.